Welcome to Timbers and 30. Welcome to the 2017 Major League Soccer season. I'm Jake Sivan. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll look ahead to this year, introduce you to the new additions to the team in the league, and focus on the season opener on Friday night against Minnesota. And joining Ross Smith and I on the season debut edition of Timbers and 30 is the owner and CEO of the Portland Timbers, Merritt Paulson. Thanks for coming on, Merritt. It was Thanks. a busy off season. You guys like that uh, little shot of me going nuts. <laughs> I, I don't look but a little that was the a little uh, the Adi goal to beat San Jose, right? I think that was like the hundredth minute, 99th minute goal last year. I, I was wondering when that was. I don't look very composed. I don't look very, uh, you know, it's 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 maybe not the image I should be going for. That was a tense game. I think that was a natural reaction. Oh. Um, heading into this season, successful preseason for sure. What do you, how do you feel going into 2017? Well, preseasons I learned in uh, the John Spencer era in 2011 and 2012 are, you know, you, I think you can focus on how the team's playing more than the results. Uh, at the end of the day, I, did we ever even lose a preseason game under uh, under Spenny? And uh, you know, but the the fact of the matter is, I don't focus on record as much as I focus on chemistry and uh, the fact that that we put in a lot of work. Uh, this off season uh, to to make some moves that you know most importantly let Caleb play hopefully play how he wants to play and get back to the identity of the team you know as as, as we all see it and, and Gav and Caleb and I have fairly like mind and 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 the type of identity and the the type of characteristics we want to see yeah. and and we didn't have that as much last year uh, and 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 frankly you know we didn't have the personnel where we could have executed on, on, on stylistically the type of soccer that we want to play. So, you know, we made some acquisitions we're all excited about. I think you definitely saw m the most offensive chemistry we've ever seen. Um, you know, again, forget about results uh, in, in the preseason, and that's exciting. But, you know, the, the results don't count until this Friday against, uh, against Minnesota. And, and you know, I'm optimistic. Uh, you know, it's unfortunate that we had a pretty significant injury uh, with, with Benga, but, you know, I, I think we've got the guys, um, you know, that can step up and, uh, and, and grab the bull by the horns there, and, and, you know, we'll see if maybe we make one or two more moves uh, over the course of the year. You talked about 2011 when you were an expansion team. Now going into your seventh season as a club, when you look back at, at the progress, of a team, both on the pitch and off the pitch, how do you see that and uh, and the way the the club has come on in terms of growth? Uh, you know, I, I I think that we've had, uh, you know, we every year we've grown, uh, and and that doesn't, it's not always manifested in in, in the record. Um, you know, certainly, uh, you saw a huge jump from 2012 to 2013, and in the Caleb Porter era. I, I believe that every year he's become a better coach. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, he set the world on fire in 2013, and, um, you know, we were an offensive juggernaut, and we won the West, and, you know, then we missed the playoffs um, by a point in 2014. Obviously, 2015, I don't have to tell you what we did. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, last year we missed the playoffs by two points. Now, you could say, wow, that's inconsistent, um, and, and certainly – we've got every expectation of making the playoffs and that's one of the, the the big metrics that we look at but there are teams in the west who've made the playoffs every year like kansas city um after their cup and they're getting bumped in the first round or uh, i could use a number of other examples i don't think there's a big material difference um between uh missing the playoffs by a point or two points um and and making it in in getting knocked out really early. I mean, I, I want to make the playoffs, but, but the bigger goal is to win championships and to have a club that can, can win championships. And, um, you know, 16 was an was unusual season because we did have to make roster moves that we wouldn't have wanted to make, um, you know, with the, with the salary pressures that come with success. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, that, that certainly was, was a bit unfortunate. We, we ended up being a little more thin than we would have liked. But... Um, I, I have seen a progression um, uh, in, in, in Caleb as a coach, and, and he, I continue to say that you know there's no other coach in this league, um, in this country, that I'd rather have at the helm. And I think we're all fortunate to have him there. And I'm really looking forward uh, to, to what we're going to do this year. And, and I think some people's eyes are going to be open, you know, with the way we're playing. I mean, there's always challenges uh, that, that come come about, but. 
there has been a progression, and uh, and and I, I don't think I've been as optimistic about a season as I as I you know am looking ahead to 2017. That'll start on Friday night. It's a big spotlight for the Timbers in the opening week. It's something we're used to. Not just the Timbers opener. This is the season opener for the entire league. Friday at 6:30 against Minnesota United. Minnesota United is one of two new teams in MLS. Atlanta United is also joining the league this year. So MLS is now at 22 teams. They, the stated goal is to get to 28 in the near future. As an owner, as someone uh, on the inside, what's your perspective on where MLS is right now in 2017 and where it's going? Look, the quality of play has improved so dramatically since we've uh, entered the league. And you, and you look at TAM and the impact that's had and it's continuing to have with, with pushing money further down the roster, which we, which we need. And the types of players the league as a whole is signing. I mean, this offseason has been unlike any other single offseason we've seen league-wide when you look at young, in their prime, uh, talent coming into this league. I mean, look, I saw uh, probably the arguably the greatest uh, designated player um, the league has ever signed in, in terms of impact on the field, just on the field. Robbie Keane was lamenting the fact that we maybe have less named guys, and he was talking about, you know, we, we, we need um, Lampards and Gerrards. You know, with all due respect to Robbie, I, I couldn't disagree more. I mean, I think, you know, we, we've rounded a corner when, you know, fan bases are looking at, at, at quality of play, uh, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's a lot less about sort of big names and the tail end of their career um, and, and much more about, uh, you know, it's a sophisticated audience. It really is. And, and, and I've seen the research, and, and I think that's manifested itself in the types of transactions that the teams are making. Um, you know, a little bit more granular, um, I think it's, it's interesting um, because we've had a really lopsided league um, from a conference standpoint over the last several years. I think the West has been a lot stronger than the East. This year, I think it's been a little bit of a rebalancing. There's some Eastern Conference teams that, that I think have gotten quite a bit better and, and are pretty good teams. And um, on the flip, I think there's a couple teams in the West who maybe aren't quite as good as they have been and you know you also have a team like Houston who, who I think will be a lot better uh, this year but um, you know it's it's always going to be a dogfight and uh, you know I, I, I think the league's doing some some really good things now we got to get better than Mexico um, and 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 that's going to happen sooner rather than later I, I, I truly believe that uh, but but that's something you know that that I need to see other owners need to see uh, in, in, in the near term. Well, fans are getting through the gates to watch the quality players coming into the league. You look at Atlanta boasting 30,000 season tickets sold. It's a pleasant problem here at Portland that more and more people want to get through the gates. Stadium expansion, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, we've got a plan. You know, I think when I sat down and talked to you guys at the end of last season, we were assessing plans that, that potentially, you know, would be viable with our footprint. And, and we, we have fully vetted a plan. We've gone through schematics, detailed budgeting. We've come up with a plan that I think works. Now, albeit it's an extremely big investment, we'd be doing it 100% privately. Uh, it's a $50 million project, which is bigger than the original 2011 renovation that, that actually got us into MLS. But uh, we're on a tight timeline and, you know, we've got to work with the city to come up, you know, with, with, with the structure that makes sense. You think it'd be pretty easy because the structure is we pay for 100 percent, but, um, you know, there's, things are never easy. Um, and, and, you know, at the end of the day, it's the city's building. But we've got a lot of people who want to come to games who can't come to games. We've got 13,000 person waiting list. We also have a co cost structure in this league um, from a, a player standpoint that's changing. I think the, the salaries combined on our roster this year are, are you know, well over 2x what they were in 2011, quite a bit more even than they were last year. And that, that trend is continuing. And I, I think it's important for our stadium to be viable for the for foreseeable future. I, I, we talk about the benefits of being downtown. Um, and, uh, you know, I think when you, when you look ahead to really ensure the long-term viability, we do need a bigger stadium. Uh, and and we've got to get up around 25,000 uh, seats when you look at the trends in the league. I mean, we're one of the smaller stadiums if you look at the, the, the newer stadiums that are being built.
So that's a change maybe coming in the future. A change we know is coming in the near future is VAR, a video assistant refereeing. We saw it in the preseason tournament in action. It's coming to MLS after the All-Star break. What's your perspective on VAR in soccer and specifically coming to the league this year? Couldn't get here soon enough for me. Uh, I, I, I think it's huge. And I think when you look at all, all the other big um, uh, sports around the world have, have incorporated technology in some way, shape, or form to ensure more um, uh, equitability, you know, and in, in, in sort of help the referees make key calls. And there's no sport that gets impacted by key calls more than soccer. Goals are so precious. A, a, a red card, a PK decision, you know, is often a, a result changing decision and it's a tremendously difficult sport to officiate so uh, you know the fact that, that that we're one of the pioneering leagues that is moving forward is great you know there's a sanctity to the flow of the game one of the things we all love about soccer is the fact that you know it's 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 less interruptions in the flow of the game and I think there's some concern out there is to you know is VAR going to slow the game down you don't realize often in these decisions there's a natural stoppage in, in, of, of, of play um, you know when refs talk to each other and balls are out of bounds etc and we've taken a pretty close look at that and and I I have a lot of faith you're not going to see you know a material change in, in in the flow of the game and every now and then if we're adding a couple more seconds but but you know making it a higher probability that we get the right call that's also a trade-off that I'm willing to make you know certain media love to debate bad calls and bars but <laughs> but they're clearly not fans of the team they're a specific team they don't own a team because there's nothing worse than losing a game because of a bad call